Does somebody want to play air hockey? <sighs> right. It's idiotic. These are the people that sent an assassin to the Antarctic HQ years ago, right? And they keep harassing us one way or another. They nearly killed me. And now that we've tracked them down, they want to be friends? <laughs> What I realize is that we can't trust anything they say because it's just another ploy to get a hold of the Penguin Crystal. Which, by the way, we still don't know what is. What are you on about? We just came up here to see what was going on. <sighs> Unless we formally agree to... What? A non-aggression pact? <laughs> well, I don't like it. <laughs> Ugh. Whatever. Look, I'm gonna go review something. Clear my mind. I need something simple. Colorful. Something I'm familiar with. <laughs> ah, fuck. Penguin Truth here, and it's time for another episode of Otaku Evolution. I thought I'd take it easy and finally get to some Dragon Ball material in this episode. I've put it off because, honestly, there's so much more to anime than Dragon Ball, and who hasn't already seen enough of it by now? I like looking at anime that either you or I could have missed or say something new about a beloved title. But this being an anime review series, Obviously, it was just a matter of time before I took on this juggernaut of anime franchises and a specific title to boot. That being the first ever Dragon Ball movie from 1986, Curse of the Blood Rubies. The setup is simple. A young boy living in the woods meets a city girl and they go on a journey, possibly to the west, to gather seven jewel orbs in order to summon a wish-granting dragon. Along the way, they meet colorful characters, making friends and enemies alike, and usually friends from enemies. Oolong, if you're going to stay with us, you have to follow a few rules. Like no 30-foot monsters in the house, understand? Sure, whatever. Pick on the pig. This first movie is basically a digest version of the mangas, and thus the TV show's first story arc, where Goku and his friends have to race to grab the Dragon Balls before Emperor Pilaf and his minions do. 
Er, except the movie doesn't feature Pilaf. Or his minions. Or this rabbit man that turns people into carrots at a touch. No, they decided to toy around with the story and revolve it around a kingdom being torn apart by its greedy king to find the rubies underneath the soil. His two minions are very different from Pilaf's, in that they aren't incompetent, and are pretty brutal. The king, Gurimas, meanwhile, has mutated into some hideous monster, warped from his greed and cursed with an insatiable appetite. Dragomal is not known for its subtlety. Anyway, the king wants the Dragomals to wish away the curse. Still, while it does have this differing element, the movie does largely follow the basics of those first 22 chapters of the manga, the first 13 episodes of the TV show. Goku and Bulma meet when the latter shoots the former in the face. Goku discovers that Oolong is a cowardly transforming pig kid. Yansha appears and is humiliated. And Roshi is a perverted old man who demands to grope teen breasts. For a 50 minute movie, it does all of this in a pretty streamlined and natural manner. Well, as natural as you could possibly do in that time frame, at least. Uh, you mean someone can really ride on that cloud? No, no, not just anyone. Only those who are truthful and pure in heart can fly upon this magic cloud. It will not support those who are dishonest or wicked in thought. Here, allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> the girl named Pansy is reminiscent of the design of Snow from the Red Ribbon story arc. A sweet girl, but capable of at least token resistance to danger. I guess she's a stand-in for Chi-Chi? I don't know, probably not. She's just there to get Goku and the gang involved with what the king's been doing. There's not much else to her, though she's not a drain on the plot or development of others. The characters from the manga at least have consistent and faithful to their source characterization, owing a lot to direct lifting from the original version. Sometimes it's the big, broad strokes that illuminate the tropes of each of them, but it can also be in smaller, quieter interactions as well such as Goku's casual ignorance and how it frustrates Bulma, or Oolong's bitter snarkiness in being shanghaied into this mission. And of course, Roshi being Roshi, which is pretty broad. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. <laughs> bouncy. Uh, I think that pig's enjoying this too much. Ready for the goods? peek a <laughs> But as usual, even with the humor, the highlights of Dragon Ball tends to be the action, and I have a particular affinity for the action scenes in this movie. The aerial duel between Bulma and the Bongo and Pasta team, for instance. It doesn't go so well for our heroes, but it looks great. Then there's Goku's first encounter with Yamcha, where the Desert Bandit throws everything he can at the kid and doesn't seem to make a dent. And most of all, I appreciate the high-flying final fight between Goku and Bongo. The animation isn't anything special for most of these, but they still have a fun kineticism. Most of the production values are clearly in the settings, which can look pretty damn crisp, and thus provide excellent atmosphere for the combat. I'd still say that the story does lose a little of the charm of that first manga arc without Pilaf's ridiculous plans, and the spectacular and funny way it concludes, especially the wish made. But this movie does mostly capture the spirit of early Dragon Ball in a very small space, and that's an accomplishment all on its own, even if the ending is a bit treacly in comparison. Grandpa was right! This world is full of fun! I can't wait to see what's next! <laughs> so, yeah. Wow, this is probably my shortest review yet. I mean, how long can you talk about a 50-minute Dragon Ball movie? I guess I could talk about it having been dubbed into English three different times, but I want to save that for the mid-year English dub review episode. All I've left to say is, if you have a little time, watch it, because it's got a certain appeal and it won't try your patience. That's a lot more than I could say for certain other DB-related titles. Speaking of other entries in the franchise, my next video will cover the first Dragon Ball Z movie, Dead Zone. Which, wow, it's even shorter than this movie. I'm really going to have to talk specifics with that one, right? Dragon Ball Month, that's a thing now, continues. Until then, see ya! Uh, I shot you three times! How are you not dead? Shot me? You got a
got a strange way of fighting. It'll take a lot more than some dumb old rock shooter to kill me. <laughs> Prepare to get beat, you filthy monster! Hey! Now I admit I have my bad days, but monster's a little harsh. <laughs> What? What's going on here? Uh, I got a score on this game machine. Neat. 